displacement reactions. We've already covered two types of reactions. We've covered synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. So the next um, type of reaction that we're going to be covering are single displacement reactions. And it's also uh, rather simple to identify, but very uniquely different from the synthesis and decomposition reaction. In a single displacement reaction, one element replaces another element from another molecule. Okay, I know it sound, might sound a little bit confusing with the terminology, but when you see it, okay, um, you'll, you'll hopefully understand it. So what we are, we're doing here is we're going to be replacing either one metal is going to replace another metal, okay, and it'll be only one movement, okay, single, or a non-metal will be replacing another non-metal, okay. So how does this look? Well, in terms of the following, so we have one molecule, okay, and we have another one. So one of these elements are going to switch with one another in our final reaction, okay. So we've rewritten the same sets of molecules, okay? But watch what happens now in the, re in the uh, product section, okay? So what happened here is the X replaced the Y, okay? Leaving the Y single. So originally, this X, and we could treat it maybe as a metal, the metal, let's say, replaced the other metal in the following reaction. So let's look at, at this in let's say in, in, in a way where maybe we might understand it a little bit better in common places here imagine this a boy and girl partner together to dance at the semi-formal during the reactant song which is playing um another boy dances as a single so here we have our couple dancing and here's our lonely single individual dancing okay and now the product song comes on next song Okay, and watch what happens here. He snoops on over and partners up with uh, the girl and leaving the guy who was originally dancing in the song, uh, in the first song, on his own single. Okay, so here he pretty much here he swoops the lonely boy partnering up with the girl, leaving the other boy to be single. Okay, so remember, it would be a metal changing with another metal or a non-metal combining with another non-metal. Now, let's look at it in terms of actual chemistry. So, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds. So we have potassium and sodium chloride. Okay, remember uh, the five-step crossover rule for the metal, non-metal, you need to be able to identify. Okay, so we're gonna write the formula of our reactants, potassium and sodium chloride is NaCl. Okay, now in our reactants, okay, we want to try to determine what's going to happen with the products. So we've listed the products, and you don't need to list them again in the, in the products because this is not what's going to happen. It's not going to stay the same. But I want to show you here visually with an animation how and, and which ones move. And we said the metals, okay, here are the metals, okay, here's the one non metal. So obviously, because we have two metals, and we only have the one non-metal, the two metals are going to have to switch places and watch me switch places right now. Okay? And, um, and once we've done that, we also want to make sure that the formula does coincide. Because now, in order for us to put the potassium chloride here together, okay, we've identified metal, non-metal, but then we have to use the, the five-step crossover rule because it is an ionic compound okay and the last thing that you need to do with all reactions pretty much is balance the equation oops okay which uh, is already balanced there's nothing that needs to be balanced okay write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction between the following compounds sodium plus water okay we know sodium is na water h2o but remember, we also said that we can also write water as HOH. And what happens here is by writing it this way, we treat this H as the metal and obviously that as the non-metal. So in other words, 
you can almost identify. We have two metals, okay, two metals, the Na and the H. And we're going to treat the H as a metal, even though we said, you know, a hydrogen is a, in a class of its own. And watch what, what happens. Notice now the two metals uh, change places. We want to make sure. But now, notice here, hydrogen is by itself. And what did we say hydrogen is when it's on its own? Well, we said that hydrogen is diatomic. Okay? So because hydrogen is diatomic, we need to put the two there. Okay. Now, what the only thing that's left now is to balance the following equation. And there are the numbers to uh, balance the following equation. And if you are struggling with balancing equations, uh, please refer to uh, previous um, episodes, the previous episode on balancing equations. Zinc plus copper one nitrate. Again, now all the old uh, types of naming, everything that we've studied already up until now in terms of naming. We are looking at naming um, ionic. We're looking at naming uh, polyatomic. So we need to keep those in mind. So we have zinc, the metal, copper one nitrate as the non -met uh, metal and non-metal. So we write out the formula. Remember, we use the crossover rule to identify the CuNO3. Okay. And obviously, here, metal, metal, non-metal. So what's going to happen in our final product? Well, the, the two metals are going to rearrange themselves with one another. But now watch what happens with the formula. We just switch them around, but we look at the five-step crossover rule and we realize, well, we need to make some changes because zinc has a plus two charge and that has to be shown in the formula. Okay. And again, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me as to what that means. But you should be aware of that. You should know that from the previous chapters. Remember, when we're combining zinc and the nit nitrates polyatomic together, we need to use a five-step crossover rule. And we've identified that. Well, if you look at the periodic table, zinc is a plus two. Nitrate here is a negative one. So we're going to need to cross over the charges and that's how we got the two that is out there. Now, the only thing that's left is to balance the following equation. Okay. And the balance equation looks as follows. Okay. Last one on this slide here, fluorine plus lithium chloride. Fluorine, remember fluorine is diatomic. Fluorine is diatomic, which means when we're writing out our formula, it's F2. When we combine this, use it, we notice it's a metal, non-metal, so we use the five-step crossover rule. Okay, but now notice, non-metal, non-metal, metal. So we have one metal and two non-metals. So obviously, the two non-metals are going to have to switch places. Okay, so here we have the same thing written out in our products. But now we know that non-metal, non-metal, two non-metals, only one metal. So it's the two non-metals that are going to have to switch places. Okay, and chlorine, okay, is also diatomic, and that's why uh, the shift was um, to writing the Cl and as a two. Now notice here, LiF again. Lithium has a plus one charge, fluorine has a negative one charge. So when they cross over, uh, simplify, remove the ones, uh, the formula ends as um, LIF. few things that you have to be really careful when it comes to single displacement reactions. And we just kind of did them blindly, but they worked. And, I, and we're going to see now with the following. Copper plus potassium chlorate. So we have copper and potassium chlorate using the five-step crossover rule. Looks as follows. Okay. When we put these together, we identify metal, metal, non-metal. So obviously we're going to be thinking 
that the copper is going to switch places with the potassium. But no reaction occurs here, okay? And the reason for this, okay, um, we didn't just guess it, and we're, you're not going to just have to memorize, you know, that, that this one is not going to, okay? We use um, pretty much a special category of compounds, okay? Um, and we're going to look at it in just a second here. Now, not all single displacement reactions take place. So here we have one that came out to a no reaction, okay? And this occurs with single displacement reactions, okay? Uh, this is because some metals are considered more reactive than other metals, okay? Which means that between these two, these two have such a big difference in, in reactivity that one might not, it would be, might be more reluctant to want to give up the compound that it's with. Okay. So scientists have collected a list of metals and they have ranked them okay, according to how reactive they are. And here's the list of compounds. And they're, they're all part of what we call the activity series of metals. You will not be asked to memorize this. I will be providing you with the activity series. You, it's going to be up to you to know how to use it. Okay. So any metal that is higher in the activity series will replace any metal that is in the lower end of the series because it is considered more reactive. Okay. So you're going to have a list from top to bottom. The metals up at the top are the most reactive. And they will take over anything that's lower on in, in the uh, activity series. The lower you are to the series, it's higher, it's harder. It will not be possible for it to displace it, so to speak. Okay, so let's look at the activity series um, in just a second. So if a metal is lower in the series, it cannot replace a metal higher in the series. So no reaction will occur because it is less reactive. So let's look at an example. Complete the following chemical reaction and balance the equation. Magnesium and zinc nitrate. Okay, so let's look at the activity series. We've identified it's a single displacement. How do you know it's a single displacement? Well, look for a lonely, okay? Look for a lonely atom, okay? Look for a lonely metal, look for a lonely non-metal, okay? Just like the dance, okay? The semi-formal dance that we, we looked at just before, at the beginning of the, uh, the slide. We saw the couple dancing, we saw the lonely guy dancing, okay? Eventually the lonely guy on the next dance you know, comes in and asks the girl to dance, leaving that other guy now lonely. Okay, so in other words, for in a single displacement reaction, one compound is going to be lonely in the reactants, and another will be in lonely in the products. But remember, if it's a metal lonely, it'll have to be the other metal that will be lonely in the um, in the end result. If it fits to the so-called activity series. So I don't know why I erased that. So we have metal, metal. Non-metal. So we would think that the magnesium would displace the zinc. So here's the activity series. Here's magnesium. Okay. Here's zinc. So magnesium is higher in the activity series, which means magnesium is more reactive, which means that, yes, we will have a, uh, a, a displacement. Okay. So magnesium will replace zinc and a reaction will occur. So there it is. So magnesium took the place of zinc, bumping zinc, and now zinc is on its own. But again, remember, in order for us to put magnesium nitrate together, we need to use the five-step crossover. Or we need to look at the charges. Okay. So you will be given a list like this here on the left. Okay, let's complete the following chemical reactions and balance the equation. Nickel and aluminum oxide. So here it is. So let's look at nickel. There's nickel. Okay, so we're looking at the metal. We're looking at the non-metal, which is aluminum. Aluminum is more reactive. Okay, so nickel is lower in the series. It cannot replace aluminum. Therefore, no reaction. Okay, and when you're writing out the, the, the 
uh, your equation, you can just write down NR for no reaction. Complete the following chemical reactions and balanced equations if a re reaction occur can occur. So if a reaction cannot occur, you just write out your reactants and then write down you know, your arrow and then in the products NR or no reaction. Calcium and potassium sulfate. So here's the activity series. Here's calcium. Okay, here's potassium. Can calcium, okay, displace, can, can this calcium knock out this potassium? No, because the potassium is higher, okay, the highest on the activity series. So really, nothing's going to displ displace the potassium. So no reaction will take place. We have now sodium, okay, metal, metal. So here, there's the non-metal. So we're looking at the activity series. We have sodium there, and we have iron down there. So will sodium knock out the iron and leave the iron lonely? Yes, it will, okay, because it is higher in the activity series, okay? Next example, and then, of course, we have to balance it. Remember, you can't balance a, a no reaction. Uh, nickel is a metal. Metal, okay, non-metal. Remember, this only works if you have two metals, okay? Notice how the activity series is metals only, okay? So if you've identified you have a single displacement reaction or a possibility of a single displacement reaction, you are always looking for metal, metal, non-metal. Metal, metal, non-metal. Metal, metal, non-metal. So, will nickel knock out copper? Nickel is there. Copper is lower. So, yes, nickel will knock out copper, leaving copper lonely. Okay? So, copper is not as strong, let's say, in reactivity. Okay? So, think of it as a, as a bully. He's coming in and he's bullying his way over to the phosphate. And going, hey, copper, get lost. You're going to be lonely. You're going to be lonely. Okay, and then balance it. Okay. Um, lead and zinc chloride. So we look for lead. We look for zinc. Zinc is higher in the reactivity series. So zinc has a stronger hold with the chloride. Therefore, no reaction. Magnesium and tin 4 hydroxide. So we look for magnesium, there's magnesium, there's tin, so tin is lower, so magnesium being higher up in the activity series will take the place, so leaving tin lonely. And again, be careful when you're putting together your formulas. Okay. And of course, you have to uh, balance the equation. Aluminum and silver one nitrate. We look for aluminum in the activity series. We look for silver. Silver is way down at the bottom. So aluminum will have no problem displacing the silver, leaving the silver single. And again, be very careful here with the uh, crossing over. Okay, remember your diatomics as well. And again, don't forget to balance your equation.